scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you please pay attention to this key it will help you be strong in the lord ephesians says chapter 6 and verse 10 remember that's what we are considering how to draw strength amplified says derive your strength from your union with him let's celebrate our media i think they have done an amazing job from yesterday is this the best you can do this is beautiful this is excellent presentation hallelujah in conclusion he says be strong in the lord he says be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides be strong in the lord if you are not able to do much within your territory is because of strength remember i told us yesterday if an electronic gadget begins to shake and it's not working well say for instance a freezer a deep freezer or a fridge you notice when the voltage is low or when there is no power it begins to shake what you need to do is to increase the capacity the voltage and you find stability instability spiritually can be traced to lack of strength vacillations today i believe this tomorrow i do not believe this can be traced to lack of strength the third key very quickly so that we pray that controls finding strength with god strength to do much for the kingdom strength to move the kingdom forward strength to ward off the gates of hell is called the force of unity the force of unity genesis 11 verse 6 please listen very very carefully tonight show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your realm. Hmm. Genesis 11 and verse 6. Behold, I show you a mystery. And the Lord said, this was the building of the Tower of Babel, that city of rebellion, the zenith of the pride of men outside of the government of the Christ. Nimrod, the son of Cush, he says, go to come, let us make bricks and mortar. Let us build for ourselves a city whose tower will reach the heavens. And the goal is to make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered from the earth. The Bible says that the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. This is the problem now. He's identifying the issue. The people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do in that state of oneness now 
nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do i hope you know as at the time this is the only story we see where satan was not mentioned the holy spirit was not mentioned and yet the word impossible was also mentioned no assistance of the holy ghost here no manifestation of any demon here just the force of unity and god himself is testifying these people do not acknowledge my government they are in rebellion to me and yet because they are one and they have one language this they begin to do when god tells you nothing you have to understand who is talking here if he's a prophet says nothing you say he's seen in part if he's some priest who says nothing you say maybe he's backsliding this testimony is coming from the lips of god almighty that there is a certain condition on earth that man can rise to that nothing absolutely nothing please keep that scripture there nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do hmm. nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do are we still together ephesians chapter 4 please from verse 1 to 6 ephesians 4 from verse 1 to 6 paul again is teaching the church in ephesus and let's pay attention to what paul is trying to discuss here i therefore paul the prisoner of our lord beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation wherein ye are called verse 2 it says with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love uh-huh we're reading to verse 6 it says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body everybody say one body please shout it and you say one body it says there is one spirit say one spirit it says even as ye are called in one hope of your calling verse 5 one lord one faith one baptism one lord not two one faith not two one baptism the last verse it says one god and father of how many please talk to me god is the lord and father of how many not certain people one lord or god and father of all who is above all and through all i love paul i love paul this man this man that encounter of falling down under that light that thing entered him you can see the results the, the kind of light that took that man from his donkey and dropped him it 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 re, it gave him a, a reorientation the depth of revelation that came from that encounter is what is producing this kind of mystery one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in how many of us that father is in how many of us write this down unity is a state of oneness unity is a state of togetherness please write it down unity is a state of oneness unity is a state of togetherness to be united therefore means to be in agreement write it down please to be united means to be in agreement number one to be united means to be of the same motivation and to have the same expectation 
to be united means to have the same motivation the same thing driving you the same thing driving me and it also means to have the same end the same expectation the same goal that's what it means to be united this is very powerful the subject of unity is one that we will continue to preach until we see the body of Christ come into that state of unity because the Bible says part of the reason why the Lord gave the fivefold is for the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry is that true until we come to a state in the spirit called the unity of the faith unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ he says and so we have an understanding from scripture that there is a level of strength and stamina and capacity that a corporate people can never have until they are one from genesis 11 and ephesians chapter 4 the bible showed us the power of unity to be of one motivation to be in agreement I'm going to share with you let's read four scriptures further to show us the value of unity and the force of unity as far as building strength the strength of a people in fact politically or I think sociologically we have a cliche that we have used it says united we stand do you know that united we stand but divided we fall that saying is true because it is consistent with what the bible says first corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 please make sure you write let's do a few studies from scripture just an exhortation to cap this up and then we pray first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 help us media so that we'll just rush the next scripture will be Romans 14 and verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, he's speaking to brethren, those who are of the family of faith, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, and in the same judgment this is paul admonishing the church in corinth very powerful scripture he says that there should be no division among you at all you should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment romans 14 and verse 19 the third scripture will be philippians 2 and verse 2 romans 14 and verse 19 it says let us therefore are we still together enugu let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another are you seeing this now i hope you understand what he's saying here that you pursue after the things that make for peace in other words stay away from the things that cause trouble and cause division follow after the things that make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another this is a very instructive scripture that means before you do what you do find out how many people will be hurt and destroyed by this my ideology how many people will be is the body of christ going to benefit from this action is this action going to bring glory to the name of the lord and then will the church suffer or will the church survive even if my denomination or my fellowship or my group benefits from it will the larger body of christ suffer or benefit scripture number three philippians chapter two and verse two then the last scripture will look at the book of acts learning from the early church four and verse 32 philippians two and verse two says paul now fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind you see it scattered through scripture paul keeps warning the church admonishing them 
beseeching them do not play with this issue of unity there are all kinds of enemies neighbors nations that are waiting to destroy you your strength is in your unity fulfill ye my joy he says that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord and of one mind the last scripture acts chapter 4 and verse 32 acts 4 and verse 32 it says and the multitude of them that believe were of one heart this is the early church now the model for us the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul watch this neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things in common this is the character of the early church this was how they were mentored by jesus directly they were mentored that it's not the issue of my thing the most important thing is let it benefit us my revelation my rema it came from me mm -mm. that everything that comes is for the supply of the body not just for the benefit of an individual are we learning something already very very important now let me show you a scripture while i was studying preparing for this this scripture it, it kept ringing in my spirit until i brought it and added it to this teaching <laughs> We're going to look at two accounts of it. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, we'll begin our reading from verse 22. Again, Jesus is teaching. Learn a mystery here. Please look up. Most times we have taught along these lines, but we have taken that teaching out of context. Let me put it in context now so we we'll understand what Jesus is saying. The scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, this was when he casted out the devil from a demoniac. They said he had Beelzebub. Now, in ancient times, there were all kinds of demon spirits that they believed controlled all different aspects. Apollyon, Leviathan, Abaddon, all kinds of demon spirits. And this, he said, is Beelzebub. And by the prince of the devils, casted he out devils. So they are questioning the source of his power and his authority to be able to cast out a demon like this. 23. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? That means there is a law that governs results. How can Satan cast out Satan? 24 now. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, what did he say? That kingdom cannot. That means the strength of that kingdom is not in the blocks that built it. The strength of that kingdom. How did Jericho go down? Even though it was an advantage, but there was an insider who cooperated with an outsider that helped to bring down Jericho. I hope you know that. When the en there is no enemy within, it is said the enemy without can do us no harm. The most dangerous enemy is not the enemy without. It is the enemy within. Are we learning something? A kingdom divided against itself, it says cannot stand. Next verse. Watch this. And if a house be divided against itself, that house also so this is a law that is applicable for the stability of kingdoms the stability of houses the stability of spiritual families the stability of a territory you are able to stand and withstand darkness to the degree that the force of unity is in place now here is the mystery 26 and if satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but hath an end an end comes to the reign and the dominion of that system 27 now you see where we keep making mistakes read this now in context no man can enter into a strong man's house stop <laughs> 
I love scripture. You are intelligent people and you went to school. With respect to what we have been discussing, what made the man strong? What made his house strong? Because the Bible here is talking about unity and its ability to provide strength. So this strong man you are calling is not a strong man because of physical might. He is a strong man because there is a formidability in his house. Jesus is teaching about unity that any nation, kingdom, family, house that is divided, it has lost its strength. Now he's showing you in a parable. No man can enter into a strong man's house. So by the definition, contextual definition, no man can enter into the house of a man that is united and formidable. That's what makes him a strong man. Are you getting it now? And spoil his goods, except the first condition. If you want to destroy a strong man's house, the first thing you look for is to bind. Please keep it, keep it media. To bind the strong man. Wow. <laughs> when you read the Bible, apply some intelligence to it. Don't just read it. It's spiritual. How do you bind the strong man? If you were Satan, God forbid, and you wanted to bind the strong man from reading what I've told you, how do you bind the strong man? So you don't bind people by putting cords on their hands. You bind them by destroying what made them strong. This is your Bible. The first assignment is to look for a way of dismantling that cord of unity and the bible says if it happens although the man was once a strong man although the nation was once a strong nation although the territory was once a strong territory you have bound them my goodness my god although the church was a strong church although the ministry was a strong ministry the way you bind the strong is to disunite them and are we are we following now this is a very prophetic message not only to the church but to the territory no man whoever this man is we know he's a stranger and whoever this man is we know he's a thief because his assignment is to come and steal the spoil but the the man will sit down and say how do i penetrate these men are strong what makes them strong unity how do i penetrate this church this system this nation this family i must bind the strong man and how do i bind the strong man next verse well we can stop here the next he was talking about blasphemy because he was sad that they disbelieved him just keep it at 27 have you learned a lesson here we are going to look at the synoptic account of matthew same story but a different expression matthew chapter 12 now still from verse 22 i pray that god will open your eyes to see this i am showing you the force of unity that it sustains the ability to provide strength if the bible gives us an assignment and says be strong in the lord then we must know how to draw strength from our submission number one if there are people under the anointing just help them from our submission number one and then from our encounters but also from our unity watch this now then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil look at this kind of condition possessed with a devil blind and dumb and he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw it was a spectacular miracle and all the people were amazed and said is this not the son of david are you learning unity but when the pharisees had it they said this fellow does not cast out devils but by beelzebub the prince of the devils uh-huh and jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself 
shall not stand next verse if satan cast out satan he, de he is divided against himself how then shall this kingdom stand this is a spiritual law it's not an opinion next verse if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judge but if i cast out devils by the spirit of god then the kingdom of god is come unto you 29 or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house verse 30 he that is not with me is against me and he that gathered not with me scattered abroad are you seeing the power of unity many churches many individuals enugu as a city the east of the niger africa as a continent we have not been able to rise to a point of power and stature spiritually and otherwise because satan knowing this law has a singular assignment divide husband from wife divide children from parents and you have rendered them powerless let me give you a secret when jesus walked upon the earth as a man do you know that as a man he did not have strength do you know where his strength came from bible students <laughs> do you know where his strength came from let me tell you the day the strength of jesus started the day there was a united scenario of the father the son and the holy spirit at jordan the day the heavens opened the father spoke the holy ghost came the word was there that was when power started read your bible until that time there is no mention of invisibility and miracles provided that unity was not established john baptized the word the heavens were open the holy ghost came the father spoke and identified when that trinity that equation was complete no power in existence they tried to push jesus off a cliff he pushed them back they tried to kill him nothing happened now when jesus was about to die it was impossible for him to die because he had to be bound as a strong man how was he bound as a strong man the holy ghost had to leave him in gethsemane it's in your bible if the holy ghost did not leave jesus hitting nails on his hand would be a waste of time a kingdom that is not divided against itself cannot fall so when the father wanted redemption to happen watch this he said look for the first time the trinity will have to be separated so that jesus can become weak weak enough to die it's called the hidden wisdom of god this is what paul said if principalities knew they will know they are not the ones who defeated jesus that jesus himself came out of that alignment so that he can die are we blessed the moment the trinity was in place everywhere jesus went power how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god we see god we see holy ghost we see jesus the equation is complete that equation of unity was in place jesus himself said i can of my own in isolation to this united force i can do nothing so when god wants to help a man god picks that man and connects him to a larger body of graces for the purpose of unity 
and you will find out that the strength you did not have as an individual you can have as a corporate people watch this if you ask me to lift this up i'm an adult look how difficult it is to lift it up with one hand are you seeing that now but does this mean this cannot be lifted can it be lifted let me have two or three gentlemen if you are not strong don't come here not with the might of heaven alone but physically two or three gentlemen stand here stand here you stand here watch this hold it too are you ready now let's try it now what as anointed please drop it as anointed as i am this thing did not respect the fact that i was alone there are some things you cannot do alone here's how the bible puts it sit down sit down sit down it says it is not good for man to be alone he was not just talking about a wife he's saying it's a risk when you are the only one standing if you are not in a company of strong people there is a limitation as far as territorial dominion is concerned when he sent them do you know why jesus sent them two by two go and read your bible he never sent them one by one when the animals were coming to the ark of noah they came how many see this kingdom has mysteries and until god opens your eyes this is the assignment of the spirit of revelation that all men may see unity is not the issue of just agreeing it's a risk to be divided for 30 years Jesus kept moving as if he was a scam that he was a savior. Jesus would move. He had playmates. They would push him left, right, and center. Yet that was the logos of God. But the day the heavens were opened, the Father spoke, the Spirit came, Jesus received. When that trinity was in place, it was an invincible formation that could not be destroyed. Enugu, hear me, east of the Niger. The kind of revival that God wants to bring across your territory is a revival that no single church will be able to birth. No single man of God, no matter how anointed. Individually, there are things we can do, but there are certain prophetic things that will take a united people. If this is what is coming from heaven, and I stand with my pride to receive it. It will break me down. Even though it is from God. I will need other people to hold it. So the prophet is holding it. The evangelist is holding it too. The businessman is also supporting it here. As a prophet. Listen. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. As a prophet I can make a lot of noise. I can prophesy. Is it not when there is a venue. And there are people that I can pray according to genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2 even a prophet when there is no food he can die give us genesis 42 let me show you something here genesis 42 the force of unity never forget this message 42 from verse 1 and 2 please leave it now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt the prophet said to his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 he said behold i have heard that there is corn in egypt get you down thither and buy for us from there that we may live and not die so the man of god can be a man of god but if there is nobody to lift his hand in ministry you will live as if god did not call you you will suffer as if you are not anointed and yet the anointing is on you why because there are things you cannot do alone even jesus on his way to golgotha he became so weak he had to fall down it took another man to help him carry the cross so that he would arrive there he would have died on the ground if he died on the ground he would not be called a cross he had to hang on a tree to be called a cross 
Everybody say unity. Do not forget, united we stand, but divided we fall. So we are discussing how and what makes a man strong. The Bible gives us its definition of a strong man. A strong man is not a macho man. A strong man is not necessarily a wise man. A strong man is a united people. The Bible calls a strong man. A strong man is not an evil man necessarily. We have a narrative. Every time we say strong man, we think it's just a demon. No. In the Bible here, it is the outsider that is an evil man. The strong man became strong because his house was kept in unity. How did war happen in heaven? Well, Bible students, have you studied how war happened in heaven? Satan decided to come and he began a proposition to one third of the angels according to the authority of scripture. He began to sell and market an idea that we can run two parallel governments. I can choose. You can worship me or you can worship Jehovah. And there was war in heaven. Satan was casted to the earth. When he got to the earth, the Bible says there was no place for him. When God made man, Eve came out of man. The garden of Eden, there was perfect unity. When Satan wanted to destroy man, here's how he came. He isolated the woman out of the man. Because she was supposed to walk under his authority. And provided she was conscious of his authority, Satan could not penetrate them. But he isolated the woman and said, woman, forget about your husband. He may join you later on. But what is the discussion? What did God tell you people? A wise woman would have said, let me call my husband. He will be the one to talk to you. But she now took loss in her hands. And Satan said, I found it. By the time he was done with Eve, the glory had departed. When I found this key in the spirit, I knew that I was ready for an unbeatable life. My unity with heaven, number one. I show you how you can have a formidable ministry. How the east of the Niger, there is no charm and no power of darkness from hell that will just penetrate a family and be killing people like that. Believe me when I tell you there is someone in that family there is someone within that neighborhood who would have agreed with Satan to say, come. The Bible says Jericho was such a formidable building. Nothing could go out. Nothing could come in. But there was a woman called Rahab. She was a prostitute. Even though the narrative later profited the kingdom, but the principle still remained the same. For as long as there was nobody to attend to the nation of Israel from inside, even though they were a covenant people, they were limited until they found access through that woman. The man who was going to destroy the nation of Israel was not outside Israel. It was Haman and he lived with the king in the palace. Can I tell you, Haman's goal was not only to destroy Israel. It was to one day take the position of that king. How do you know? When the chronicles was opened and the king called him and said, what should be done to this man? Immediately without thinking twice. He said, let the king give him his royal robe. He thought he was the one. Let him ride upon his horse. He said, go and do it to Mordecai. And the king said, wow. Haman said, ah, for Mordecai, I thought it was me. He had been eyeing the throne. It was only a matter of time. Now watch this. There are certain levels of revival that if it is to come upon this land, there are certain levels of superior end time mantles, end time anointings. No matter what the individual efforts of the churches, the men of God, the politicians, the business people, no matter what it is, that formation 
of king, priest, prophet until that formation is reformed. There is a level of God's glory that cannot be hosted. The nation of Israel always preserved this formation. King, priest, prophet. And it was an invincible formation and no arsenal of darkness could penetrate them. But now, what the devil has done to the church is that he has brought us to a point where even though we are well-meaning people, our concern is just our personal projects. It doesn't matter what happens to the body of Christ. Once my church is being built, I am okay. It doesn't matter what happens, whether the devil is killing and destroying people, whether there is moral decadence in the land, I don't care. No matter what is happening in Enugu, it's not my business. Provided nothing has come to my neighborhood. I hear that a pastor lost his wife or lost his child or lost something. That's his cup of tea. After all, we don't believe the same thing. And while you are there, you do not know, oh Esther, that when Mordecai is done with those outside the palace, he's also going to come to those within the throne. That was what Mordecai warned Esther. He said, don't think when Haman is done with us you will be spared because you are also a jew are we together now one of the indices to measure the spiritual maturity of a territory is when believers ministers of the gospel men and women of god obtain grace from god to now begin to look beyond their personal progress beyond their personal progress to look at the advancement and the corporate growth of the body i know my church is going well my sons and daughters are doing well but is the body of christ in enugu state doing well is the body of christ within the east of the niger doing well if the body of christ is not doing well you must learn the art of carrying the burden and the pain of the body even if it does not affect you directly are we together you now see why i have profound respect for meetings like this where several men of god keep aside any denominational barrier keep aside who is a man of god a prophet and come together and say look this is about kingdom come this is about a revival upon the land don't you ever think satan loves what is happening now and he will do everything to fight it he will use offense he will use all sorts of things to fight the unity when a husband and a wife at home just when there is a prophetic word that god is opening a new season for that family watch how the devil comes suspicions attacks and all kinds of things a man who has loved his wife for many decades all of a sudden they start having irreconcilable differences and they don't know that there is a stranger joining their heads together beware when new seasons open for you because when new seasons open for you one of the ways that satan will seek to destroy those seasons is to bind the strong man to bind the strong man means to bring you to a point where you are disunited and when you are disunited listen carefully there is so much you cannot do you may be praying and falling down personally but you see the reason why we keep excelling as churches but the territory does not carry that signature of the power of god because we are still concerned with individual progress in every part of this nation and across Africa there are churches being founded there are conferences happening there are conventions happening why is it then that the body of Christ or the territory has not received that signature of the corporate move of God I will tell you why because sincerely speaking if we are to be honest with ourselves we are largely concerned about individual progress to what degree am I doing well any other person that fails that's his business let me just succeed Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because when, for instance, the woman who was bent over for 18 years was healed, 
it was not the healing that was their business it was who did the healing who will take the credit for it and jesus said look how depraved the heart of these people are and sadly speaking it's still the same experience today if a believer receives a breakthrough and the hand of god comes upon the person we are not just interested in the fact that god gave a visitation our interest is through whose hand did god do it we want to know so that we know who to give credit to are you learning something tonight the force of unity very quickly let me give you three keys that are responsible for activating the force of unity three keys ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 and then i give you three keys all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Ah. That's what that's what is important. Not Joshua Selman. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Souls are being saved in Enugu. The most important thing is that Jesus is lifted. It doesn't really matter which prophet God used, which apostle God used. Was Jesus glorified? Were souls saved? Are destinies being transformed? Well done for all the vessels he used. But more than building personal empires. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9. We have to pray. Two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, then one will lift up his fellow. Are you seeing the power of unity? It will be impossible for all of them to fall if one becomes weak spiritually if one is not doing well east of the niger look at me keep that scripture there do you know one of the reasons why you have excelled financially in business it is this same principle so what happens is that i learned when a man becomes made by god and helped by god he is mandated to gather people around a community am i right on that i hope i'm being accurate on that and then he now gets a few boys and trains them is that true are you seeing the power now while he's training them sometimes he may not even be directly related to them but he trains them and then in no time they rise then they themselves get other people and train them it is the reason why there is widespread prosperity in the land now if only that one person says i will, nobody will rise what happens when he dies the territory returns back to square one is the reason why the departure of many people brings an end to certain things god is doing because they were not concerned about lifting and raising others back to that scripture please for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe unto him that is alone you see what i'm saying now woe unto him that is alone even when he's anointed when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up next verse again if two lie together then they have heat but how can one be warm alone unity are you learning now the last verse 12 if one prevail against him two shall withstand him and a threefold cord hallelujah 
is not quickly or easily broken three keys to activate the force of unity beloved people of God co-laborers in the gospel politicians businessmen if you understand my sermon tonight if I drop the mic here my coming would have been a successful one because by the next time we'll see you will be flying on eagle's wings on the strength of unity are we together number one love john 13 35 the first key that controls the force of unity is love can i tell you this love is not just an emotional thing it's a product of a revelation when you love just emotionally your love will not last it will vacillate according to how you feel i feel nice about this man of god i feel nice about the east of the niger i feel nice about my pastor and the day you don't feel nice you don't love again love is more than a feeling it is a choice and a covenant the covenant of love is the ability to stay loving regardless of feeling if you love just based on emotions you are going to be in trouble emotions is largely a product of hormones we are talking of covenant god introduced covenants to manage man's vacillations because if it's just to leave man like that peter can say lord i love you today and by tomorrow he denies him the covenant john 13 35 are we learning something tonight by this shall all men know that in enugu i have disciples by this shall all men know that in the east of the niger god has men if ye have love not for me i'm not doubting your love for me but your love for one another can i tell you this hating yourself is a way is a dangerous way to live why should you have preachers who hate themselves why should you have family members there are some of you as family members you cannot look at yourself eyeball to eyeball do you know that do you know that there are family members who cannot look eyeball to eyeball and sometimes it may not be your fault just individuals who just get up and want to make things difficult and they divide the unity and the advancement of that family everybody shout love let the devil hear you love love you love your pastor just when he preaches a correct message that you like the day he lashes out the flesh you look at him this church is time to change church this man i'm not understanding him in this last one week and then after two years of rigma rolling around with confusion and pain and regrets and sad stories to tell god will say still go back there that was what happened between hagar and sarah abraham drove hagar but the truth is she wanted to leave too there's no record of her saying let me stay with speed she left when she met trouble in the wilderness god said go back to your mistress go and submit to her that is the key to your advancement that was how your blessing started foolish lot was also another example for us the first decision lot made outside of the influence of abraham took him to sodom every other decision he had made abraham had assisted him the first official decision outside of the partnership of abraham led him that means his prosperity was not his wisdom it was a product of a man who so loved him dearly can i tell you this you must make up your mind that the spirit of hatred bitter hatred pastors sitting among themselves and talking about other men of god tearing them down talking about members talking about denominations it is dangerous even if you pray in tongues afterwards it is still dangerous there must be genuineness of love please lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry to the god of heaven 
Lord, take away hatred, bitterness from my life, from any good state. You are not just praying for yourself. Please pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of hatred, let it lead my life forever. I reject hatred. Not for my fellow brother, not for my fellow sister, not for a fellow servant of God. I reject hatred. Not for my fellow family member, my fellow business partner. Are you praying? Love. Number two, in the name of Jesus. Number two, Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. What is the second key that activates the force of unity in a church, in a home, in a territory? It's called mutual honor. Mutual honor is the second key that binds a people and makes them united. Can I be honest with you? Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. A people will never be united when there is no mutual honor. Mutual honor means honor that is communicated and reciprocated. Not one-sided honor. One-sided honor will never produce unity among a people. You can't criticize me and insult me and call me stupid and say, let's be one. It won't work that way. Mutual honor. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and in honor preferring one another. Imagine with me for a moment that our father at his age came here on behalf of the eldership to introduce me and to open the gates for me. All these great servants of God, they came and they sat down and here comes this arrogant man all the way from Abuja and he comes to mount the pulpit just because he calls himself Apostle Joshua Selman and I insult every one of these fathers, these veterans, downplay everybody and then people are shouting under the anointing and I'm insulting everyone. You will never invite me back to this city again. I show you why for some of you certain altars shot towards you forever because the day you climb that altar you tore everybody including God. The only person who was not torn by that talk is you. And the eldership said, mark this person. Package his honorarium and give him and never return him here again. Mutual honor. You've heard my teachings on honor. Please listen to them. I have taught extensively again on honor. It is one of the greatest spiritual weapon I have learned. Second only to encounters. Honor. The key to access. Any door that closes over you, it is dishonor that closed it. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Are we learning now? Yes. I watch this with shock how sincere ministers of the gospel sincere leaders in society continue to pay the price for violating honor it is the, the price of this honor is too costly it's not worth it are we together there are some of you here the reason why you may never have the opportunity to access the grace upon your pastors is because just because you saw them when they were starting ministry that sense of honor is not there most pastors is when they go outside of their churches you really see the grace that god gave them when they return back home ah this man is here okay let's listen lift up your hands for a blessing and they casually lift their hands and say look at the man they look at the cheap shoe and cheap watch is even wearing to prophesy and while you are saying that heaven is watching you and a stranger will come into the church with his heart open. Lord, I don't know who this man is, but I open my heart. Next Sunday, he's the only one who comes to testify. 
is the reason why many workers in church don't receive miracles because they are familiar they've seen the man of god when he was on jeans when they were having leaders meeting they saw him when they even served food he was eating banana in their presence he had uh, swallow everything and what is there is it not the same hand he even gave me some of it i'm not teaching human worship and let me also reciprocate one of the reasons respectfully speaking why many ministers of god have lost their partners and their helpers is because of dishonor even to members too members are also human beings just because they love and honor us as men of god does not mean we treat them like animals in the name of superiority members have a unique way of punishing you they will leave you in isolation they will leave you in pain financially and so on and so forth is the reason why a very wealthy man can leave his own church and go to another ministry and say any project that is happening please call me whereas in his own church less than one tenth of that amount he will only go to where he's honored not flattered honored he that honors me i will honor the bible says he that despises me i will lightly esteem are we together there are many young people who have dishonored their parents the bible says honor your father and your mother in the lord let, let me submit to you do you know why many young people in this nation it is not well with them it's not a cause they brought it upon themselves through dishonor there is such a mark that is like is it, this dishonor has become fashionable in our world today it's a trend many young people see some of our fathers some of you can see a father like our bishop now and just because you have your small anointing and your prayer group or your ministry if you have your way you can even push him if i'm on the street as joshua selman if i see our father and our mother the bishop carrying something on their head i stand before the god of heaven i will come down and help them or at least i will instruct someone to help them my biological parents as i am today if i ever see them lifting something and it's within my power to help them apostle nonsense i will throw it down and help them i want to live long this honor will kill you and cut short your life i'm telling you this many young people you see why it is not well with them in ministry in life because they do not understand the power of honor yesterday our media here were not giving us the best of presentation and i challenged them in love yesterday only god knows all those who sat down together now in unity look what they have produced today within 24 hours can i tell you this servants of the living god here in the east of the niger it's time to keep all this petty jealousy fighting unhealthy comparison who has the largest church members who has the largest who has the greatest anointing who knows this one who has traveled abroad for international ministry let me tell you the truth i must submit to you let's not confuse it we are not the same that is a revelation we must humbly admit we are not the same however no matter how high god has lifted anybody we must be able to hold hands don't all these cliques that is based on we who have prophecy we who have money we who have revelation we who have gone abroad one day you will meet the person you are despising and he will be the person holding the key that opens the door for you someone shout unity shout it again say unity you may be sitting by someone's side right now and just because the person is looking like a poor person you don't know that the job you applied the child of that man who owns the company is the one sitting at your side just because you come to church and you see people humble and sitting down does not mean everybody is suffering there are many people they say turn to your neighbor and say god bless you 
and you turn and you look at your neighbor looking like and you feel it's an insult i don't even know why i'm sitting here and god says foolish person i put you to sit down here i ask the ushers to lead you here because this is the answer to your prayer i'm not being hard on you as from a standpoint of sarcasm it is so that you will learn you've heard me say i am a product of many anointings forget that you see bishop and the fathers here honoring me i'm not stupid to know that these are fathers i must be able to communicate that honor too not to stand and say ah they acknowledge this is why many young people don't last long can i tell you this anytime anybody honors you you are not done until you reciprocate it don't be the one getting honor from everywhere acknowledge me and you are not coming and you must communicate it to match the gravity of what was given to you if i appreciate every one of these men of god and i tell them i love you sirs i appreciate you sincerely oh apostle you are a great man i love you sir oh i didn't even realize it was you blessings apostle god bless you we're together in Abuja a few days, uh, maybe about a week or so ago. Are we learning something? Don't turn and look at a man of God and say, how many members do you have? Um, 200, 200. Uh, my, my friend, we're talking about people who are doing something serious here and you are even coming. Let's be careful. The person you drive today or you have your prayer group some of you already have your prayer group and you are already forming some of these ungodly cliques push can you prophesy no move this way you can you have a no 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 move this way do you have money i mean serious i'm not talking of uh, money to buy shoe and bag do you have serious financial resources listen servants of the living god some of us have made these mistakes some of these wealthy individuals today we had a chance to be close to them when they were nothing we pushed them looking for those who had it at that time now someone else came and grew with the people who are millionaires today and you are now calling them and say i knew you they say i knew you too what did you do when you saw me that way don't come and tell me to bless you when you ignored me it is the person who stands by you to help you rise that is the person you stand by to support sit down are we learning can i tell you this i made up my mind that's why you see sometimes as a man of god there are younger ministries who send me text messages apostle we're a prayer group of five seven people we're just there and sometimes they think that I may not respond to them. Sometimes they come around for our meetings and I see them, just young people, seven, eight. You think I'll just say, all these boys. Sometimes I can sit down with them to say, gentlemen, let me tell you, I believe in where God is taking you. Wow, we're standing with apostle. Is apostle God? Am I not a man? Listen, you can do it. You can make it where you are now. It may look like you are small. And sometimes you see them crying. That encouragement. A few years down the line you will hear that those people are on fire somewhere and they will still honor you because you showed them mutual honor when you fight somebody and the person still succeeds you are in trouble sit down You want to see the church in Enugu rise? Young people, don't see the fathers and make a mistake of dishonoring them just because you flew first class. Come down from your first class, push your designer bags, get on your knees and say, Daddy, I'm just coming from the US, but I'm not stupid. I know you are here. Let the world see me while I honor you. And the father will bless you and ask you stand up you're a great man may you go far that one statement 
already opens the door for the next level of your life fathers while god is helping us and lifting us do not laugh at the young minister in your church who is writing songs that look off key don't look down at that young lady she's working while schooling that is a billionaire in progress are you willing to honor them can i tell you this you will never truly be able to criticize someone who honors you so much and you honor them back where will it come from most times there is the instincts in men to feel fulfilled one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress when you downplay people's sacrifice can i tell you this i know we are different in revelation i know we are different as far as the dimensions of god revealed to us is concerned but i want you to know that every man who genuinely names the name of christ and loves him is doing his best with the information he knows to do you must be careful there are people making mistakes i agree there are people in ignorance i agree but let's be careful as we point fingers at people especially in this end time some of the most unusual men will be carrying mantles in these end times that will make some of us bend our head in shame forever we must be careful enugu united you stand but divided you fall a politician can come out for election and fail woefully and you see him and laugh at him and put your hand on your head till you fall down he's watching you that's your governor you just laughed at the day he becomes a governor he will look for where your church is and he will say they at a mad road there <laughs> why These are the wisdom keys that many people do not pay attention to. I hope you are not just laughing. You are getting what I'm telling you. Praise the name of the Lord. Mutual honor. When I learned this, I never go to a place and I never go to a territory and dishonor the people there. If you give me the privilege of climbing your pulpit there are times you see me challenging things and i'm hard on people but i must always let you know that it's from a standpoint of love and not sarcasm you will never hear me talking about any man of god to criticize i will challenge wrong doctrines i will challenge wrong things but it is not a ministry god gave me to point fingers at people no you will never see me climb if I climb on this pulpit and the rule of that church is no moving around the pulpit this is where I'm going to stay till I finish preaching it will not stop the people from hearing what they're saying it will not stop fire from falling fire can fall while standing here listen adaptation is proof of honor you must learn to have a high level of adaptability many of you wonder why you see me preach across different denominations that have different doctrinal divides i have my core beliefs i have my core spiritual values but i'm able to be flexible enough as this man is playing keyboard for me please stop for a moment there are churches you don't play this while the sound is on when you go there don't say my own i know how i charge my atmosphere have different networks in the spirit so that you know how to come in, to connect to MTN, Airtel, different ways. Sit down, please. I have to pray. I don't want to keep us here for too long. Are we learning something tonight? Hear me. There are places, don't feel bad, please. There are churches you go to teach. Maybe their ethics and their rules is that you either are in corporate or suit honor them don't go and say me i know what the day jesus appeared to me i was wearing a track suit i agree with you i'm not fighting your revelation but can you can you have that adaptation are you hearing what i'm saying now listen if we do not practice mutual honor i promise you this conference will only come and go and every other thing will continue that way. 
but for mutual honor mutual honor if the protocol are doing a nice job don't look at them and say do your work well done sir god bless you and they feel encouraged let somebody try to touch you and you see what they will do because you have honored them a man of god comes and sows a seed of 10 million don't send him a text and say thanks god bless you abba 10 million is much now have some time to honor the person and say look we appreciate this all blessings come from god but we realize that you have done this as a communication of love and honor for this building and i'm the pastor i feel it as a responsibility to come and say thank you or you write a letter and the man says because of what you have done this is only the first phase <laughs> let me tell you this honor prolongs benevolence anywhere you show honor the benevolence has been given the strength for continuity is god speaking to us tonight again someone shout honor. honor now aside from the men of god don't go there all of you i want you to stand and in one minute walk up to someone and just appreciate the person and tell the person i truly honor you it doesn't matter whether you know the person or not don't come and waylay the man of God. Don't please don't come and waylay the man of God. Go ahead. You are appreciating the next apostle. Some of you you are appreciating your wife. I honor the grace of God upon your life. I may not know you. Don't look for the people you know or your church members. I didn't say to go to your church members. I honor you yes i know you're a man of god we fought last year but it's over it's over it's over we are all servants of god it's the same heaven we are going to please return back to your seat rejoicing lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall see when we are your instruments oh look what is happening to the ministers my goodness the church is marching on the church is marching on regardless denomination enugu the gates of hell shall not prevail the church is marching on sing it one more time with revelation let the devil hear you know the church is marching on the gates of hell shall not prevail hear me anybody that comes into your city to cause division show him the gate of the city and tell him not in any good state carry your trouble and leave this city there is a lot that god is doing no 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 please don't go to the man of god the unity is all right we've we've we've, we've greeted one another just please go back so that we don't have chaos we are going to pray god sees your heart god will honor you man of god and bless you in the name of jesus are we together that a time will come when a particular church is holding a crusade and a pastor that is not even related will pay for 30 buses and say transport people to and fro if they ask you say a fellow co-laborer has come to partner what is the name of the church is not necessary just know that we want jesus to be lifted are we together now the truth is that hear me 
we will define doctrine we will define modus operandi anybody who does not name the name of jesus and anybody who does not represent jesus is not part of those i'm talking about i have to balance this we are talking about those who fundamentally agree that there is one lord one faith one baptism there are certain beliefs that we may define no worry it's not too much of a reason to cause division enugu the greatest strength that will come will come from a united force if somebody comes and says i am a herbalist i must destroy this church suddenly you will hear voices from every altar what did you say and he said no 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 i was just talking about one person he said no there is no one person in enugu we are a united team you want to attack one man of god you will have to destroy all of us and the devil lets you go no man can come into the house of a strong man and spoil that man enugu it is not the charms that the herbalists are making that's not what is stopping the progress of the church it is not the divinations and incantations it is that the strong men have been bound i'm here to lose them to lose them can i tell you this provided a family is still fighting one another this our firstborn is a millionaire he will not listen to us as if they are the ones who gave him the money they have refused to acknowledge that it was through diligence god blessed him and they become entitled you must bless us and he says continue your nonsense there the day that family decides to be united forgive one another sir we respect you you came out of this family and today god has blessed you we don't trivialize you and he now looks and says even though i am lifted i am still your brother you see that unity they will now turn and say where is the power that does not want this family to move and the devil has to listen because everybody is saying the same thing the moment you are saying something else the devil has cheated you one voice the reason why many terrorists prevail over several parts of Africa and even our nation is because largely they have one voice. If the voice is destruction, they remain there. If the voice is mayhem, they remain there. Tonight God has come to shake the church in Enugu and east of the Niger to say it is no longer just about Catholic and Anglican and Presbyterian and any other church together we are a united force yes i know you may not pray in tongues like me but don't worry it's too small a reason we are still lifting jesus high i know that you may not do this but and the devil says what happened now how do we destroy enugu how do we and you will begin to see such a rise of prosperity and wisdom and increase and power the moment you see a man of God crying, you don't need to ask him what denomination. You are a servant of the living God. Why are you crying? Ministry, I'm tired. I'm about to give up. And he said, not when I'm here. You are not giving up when I'm here. Is it not rent? How much is it? Look, let's rally around. I know that you were careless. You made mistakes with your finances, but God can restore. But that shame, it is not the devil who will laugh at the church. Come, let us cover this shame. And when that is done, we can now teach you how to do it right. Can I tell you this? Many of you need to return back. Let me give you, let me challenge you. Go back and put a hashtag, United Enugu, together we stand from this conference. Let your family members know this is not a political thing oh. let me give a disclaimer now so that you don't say apostle came to do politics i'm a man of god i'm encouraging unity call your brother and say my friend you've been in london for 10 years you have refused to come and see us it's all right we came here and we had a message 
there is a dimension of grace God is giving you that this family needs we need you back come there are dimensions that we may never experience there is a grace God has given this man there is a grace God has given this man there is a grace God has given this church there is a grace God has given this one for this church God gave them the grace for prayer for this grace God, God gave them the, the, the grace for consecration and holiness and purity when you find out that the flesh is growing one salmon one salmon from that ministry will damage the flesh permanently there are others God has given them the grace for wealth and prosperity there are others God has given them the grace for leadership excellence and administration when you come together you will become a balanced individual prosperous holy anointed with the spirit of revelation with doctrinal soundness having character having prosperity having maturity having influence having excellence that is god's church the body of christ <laughs> hallelujah so when they tell you someone is sick and is about to die you know you don't have the healing anointing yet there's no need sitting down there and letting the person die because of ego like doctors recommending themselves you can say there is a man of god i know in Enugu. there is grace on his life man of god can you help me one of my members is about to die and he will stand in that office and say you have provoked that office we will not lose one in the body in the name of jesus christ when that man is healed and you want the healing anointing you can meet him and say talk to me god has granted you such a grace i need this grace on my altar and he says look i had a revelation but i studied scripture this is what i did this do and you will see what i saw the church has increased you are not having increase people come to your church receive miracles and go and there is someone god is increasing don't just say he's using charms and criticize him humble yourself man of god there is grace upon your life and he says look manage some of these excesses you are doing in church all this jumping up and down settle down teach the people doctrine create an atmosphere that can allow responsible people come to your church now you have helped that person because he that told the person was just anointed but childish no immature no maturity no soundness of doctrine no coordination no excellence no leadership now you have introduced these missing dimensions members can now come and begin to stay because they have a pastor that reflects maturity that they can be members in that church you're a man of God you are doing well but you are always struggling financially you notice your members are also struggling financially don't start creating a theology out of your pain and say don't worry money does not matter you are failing in that area just admit it and find one who god has helped and granted grace it's amazing that what is a mountain to you someone near you already has the grace to turn it to a valley if only you can be humble to receive you had reverend dan's testimony and his dear wife 13 years trusting god for the fruit of the womb he would have remained like that till jesus would come or he would have written a book that don't the era of miracles are over but there is always a grace within reach today there are parents with twins wonderful bubbling children serving the lord now please look at me we're about to pray i apologize i know my time is gone right where you are standing whose grace have you dishonored within your land that God has sent to be for your lifting your prayer life has gone down whereas there is a man of God seated here with the grace for prayer there are prayer groups here that you can encounter the grace for prayer and damage spiritual laziness once and for all have you ignored that grace I told you I will give you three keys for unity one is love two is mutual honor the third is forbearance what is forbearance accommodate weaknesses and limitations accommodate perspectives that are that are different from what you know 
it does not have to be what you believe for you to receive people no if it is not the way my church does it i don't believe it that is an error there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism forbearance is the ability to be accommodating yes i know in your church you may have ac very beautiful line arrays but maybe this ministry you have come they may not have all of those things do you have the flexibility to still forbear forbearance is powerful i go to minister in many places and i have i'm generally a conservative person i'm not jumping 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 but i go for meetings and sometimes you see people jump and laugh and they're happy and they run up and down sometimes they even fly on one another like they're fighting wrestling forbearance the most important thing is to communicate christ i may not do that in my own ministry but you must be flexible is that true yes you must learn to forbear just because it is not the way you know it to be does not mean god is not there you must have the flexibility there is a way you pray the day you go somewhere and you find out that prayer is not done that way don't be too quick to conclude have a heart that accommodates this is the key to unity i'm connected to a lot of men of god people in ministry across the globe and sometimes for some of these people we have very differing perspectives in many things but it's not enough reason some believe in deliverance and only deliverance some don't, don't mention the word deliverance some don't believe it does it's not enough reason to fight we are not a political party here you can still hug yourselves and when the person says, ah, i'm seeing a demon somewhere and you don't believe in that don't just turn and say you have come with this your rubbish forbear 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 are you learning something tonight forbear forbear tolerate some of you have siblings who are talkatives when they greet you before they say how is mommy and dad is already one hour and you are a quiet disciplined calculated and intentional individual you can get very wary and say how, how do you ever succeed making noise like this no no you must have a large heart that accommodates there are men of god who will stand on the pulpit and like our father baba deboe they may be quiet somebody shout hallelujah somebody do this but there are others when they stand on that pulpit you'll be praying that the pulpit should not even fall it does not mean god is not working with them no just because you are used to it being a certain way does not mean it is the only way you must have forbearance hallelujah so if you go to a church if you don't like the dance group that is dancing just forbear it's only 10 minutes they have it's not enough to destroy your faith allow them finish dancing and go and sit down oh you don't like the choreography no problem just forbear then the children now come in with their special number they will make mistakes their heart will fall they will fight one and just forbear allow the children be featured too don't sit down and be too mature and say what is this i came for i just came out of a retreat i know nobody is doubting your call but let the children also serve jesus hallelujah and you may go to a church and find maybe it's their thanksgiving and people are dancing they will take three steps forward and move back and move back and take just for beer don't sit down and say look at how they are, these people are carnal no you are the one who is carnal they are celebrating god the way they know you must forbear hallelujah listen we're about to pray i'm not wasting your time don't go around insulting pastors don't go around insulting members don't go around comparing pastors members sometimes are the ones who join the heads of men of god saul killed one thousand david killed ten thousand 
when Saul hears what do you think he will do oh apostle Joshua Selman came to town come and see what happened mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. we do not have the ministry of outshining or the ministry of demeaning we are only contributors to lift up the hands of the servants of God in the land to the end that Jesus be revealed and Jesus be glorified I am not in any way in the flesh better than any of these veterans of the gospel you see what you see happen is an election of grace and the privilege that God has given I must be wise enough to know that even though they honor me it is not to mean they are demeaning their own anointing are we together now don't come and thank God for you sowing seeds to my life but make sure you also do it to your pastor too don't go around blessing other people and leave the primary person that God is using to feed you is hypocrisy love mutual honor husband go back home and meet your wife and say wife I don't want to take it for granted that every week you cook for me don't say I paid your dowry that some of those statements are demonic statements it's not a Christian statement thank you thank you for having the discipline in the rain and in sunshine and then you wife when they are at appreciating you like that don't just say eh -eh. Uh -uh. only a wise husband can produce such a wise wife you, you see that now you are balancing the equation now and the devil that wants to cause trouble in that marriage now is the one who is left for shame and children parents pay your school fees they labor to help you don't come and say i didn't ask you to could you to you know to to uh, what do they call it i didn't ask you to bring me here that's that's not a why that's a childish statement daddy thank you it was in my presence i saw people did not write exams some their final year exams but thank you for always granting me that school fees today i'm a graduate and i have come to honor you thank you sir honor are we together somebody comes and does something nice for the city don't sit down and say let them not do it now no thank you sir for being thoughtful enough we have been suffering lack of water here you came and now brought borehole don't say instead of him to even make it electronic he now made it at least he tried you see there is a spirit we have in africa that i'm praying the spirit of of dishonor and ingratitude if somebody brings a bag of rice even if it's a small bag thank god that he was thoughtful enough to bring it don't say at his level look at what he, he, he should come and carry this nonsense out of this house. don't think like that can i tell you this till when people bless me whether it's 100 naira whether it's 50 naira it is with the same passion of gratitude i receive if you like bring one billion you bring one naira I am grateful to all of them more than what they gave is the heart that can isolate you to honor you this much are we together now are you ready to pray these are the keys that I have learned go back to your church and teach your workers heads of department don't fight yourself ordained workers don't fight yourself this evil man god will punish him for us in this department and you are serving there you will not receive the blessing that comes let me tell you this men will offend you men are limited but you must sustain the grace today i am able to dispense the anointing with this degree of results because i am a product of many anointings when I came, I sat down, sorry to have to say it. You saw me talking to our father before I came up. I held his hands. I said, Daddy, I honor you and our mommy, and I sincerely appreciate you. Thank you, sir. That's what I was saying. We were in Enugu. We were in Nsuka just a few days ago. Reverend Vindiolu was there. Our father, the bishop at his age, drove down to Nsuka. And I said, ah, this man at this age, he came with our mother this morning. 
she's still here tonight several of these people you see only god knows the conferences and the programs that they shut down to be here how dare you dishonor them because you are appreciating joshua selman how many of me can change this city by myself i'm only here for this night and i'm gone but these are the ones who remain lifting up the name of jesus in the east of the niger never honor me at the detriment of these graces listen prayer groups your little leaders that god I, god is helping don't despise them love them and respect them that gentleman you see shouting and sweating under a tree there is a grace upon him don't honor the men of god and ignore the protocol you see how long these gentlemen have been standing they have been standing even while you are sitting down if this is a night vigil this is how they will stand don't dishonor them what of those who were about cooking for us one of our mothers here has been doing <clears throat> the sacrifice that this woman of god has been making she also came for the meeting but the sacrifice how dare you dishonor them what of those who have been driving me around since i came some of these security guys they are driving the cars you see them running up and down what of this cameraman this gentleman has been walking up and down like as if he doesn't have what to do snapping people up and down whereas he too wants to receive you must honor everyone without the person who sets the stage the sermon can be effective without the person who fix the mic our media people are somewhere there when i was lashing them yesterday you were laughing at them but those guys deserve honor because if this screen is shut down what of you who left your house and came some of you since afternoon you were here no matter how listen listen no matter how anointed we are if you are not here we are not in ministry it's an uncomfortable truth but it is the truth in the multitude of men is a king's honor if you have a vision without men the vision will still perish please rise up on your feet for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord For the way of the Lord Is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord One more time For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord whilst you are standing I'd like you to pray for the unity of the church in Enugu lift your voice and pray Father bind us together in love every church mention the name of any church you know mention the name of any man of god you know lord let us shelve away every prejudice mention the name of every ministry regardless denominational barriers we make up our minds that this is the season of unity it doesn't matter what assembly you identify with locally speaking united we stand divided we fall united we stand divided we fall enugu united you stand are you praying divided you fall east of the niger united you stand divided you fall that they may be one as we are one that the preachers may be one as we are one having a sense of love one towards another genuine 
heartfelt sincere love having a sense of mutual honor one towards another beyond results beyond achievements having a sense of forbearance one towards another hallelujah now there are three things i'm going to do very quickly our time is up we've had moments where we've prayed number one is i'm going to minister healing and deliverance in the next maybe two to three minutes just speak over those who are sick in body and those who have been oppressed number two i'm going to prophesy and speak prophetically over lives that these doors and these gates be opened number three i'm going to repeat what we did last year again i will ask our father the bishop and our mother when it is time alongside maybe a few pastors that will be selected to come and stand upon this altar representing the church over Enugu and the east of the niger and they will stand and blow a shofar and announce a new season of strength of power of revival of transformation and of growth are we ready for that pray in one minute every burden that i came here with must leave now lift your voice and pray everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be restored unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be restored unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me hallelujah hallelujah now i want to rebuke every spirit and every power that is not of the christ sitting over the destinies of men now we are a united force away with offense away with bitterness from yesterday and today there have been massive outpourings of the spirit i want to pray now very quickly father in the name that is above all names over enugu state over the east of the niger i come by the power of the holy spirit and i declare that every spirit sitting upon the glory and the destinies of man I decree and declare right now at the count of three as you shout the name Jesus those powers and those forces are dislodged I want you to bring them out one my God two three shout Jesus I command those powers release destinies now release every destiny under captivity help them please I cross those destinies in the name of jesus christ i declare right now fire from heaven every altar that will not release you and let you go we set it on on fire now we set it on fire now bring them out i'm still praying the lord is showing me what looks like stones I'm seeing like three stones and I'm seeing it with the pictures of men on it. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is saying, set it on fire. I don't know whose destiny has been caged by the orchestrations of witchcraft. But right now at the count of three, as you shout the name of Jesus, may fire burn those altars. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be released now. Be released now. 
be released now. Be released now. I give the check for Lynn. I need a chance for it. I need a chance for it. Shut the gates, cut the lights, shut the bars. I need a chance. I need a chance. I need a chance. Hey, police, cut the lights, cut the bars. I need a chance for it. Hallelujah. Now, I want to attack the spirit of delay. Hear me. As I pray this prayer, the power of God will come on many people. They will start running for some of them. As I declare speed, Father, in the name of Jesus, every destiny that has been kept down by the power that raised Christ from the dead, at the count of three, let the yoke and altar of delay. One, two, three. Take speed in your life. Speed in your life. Speed in your life. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause delay. I cause delay. I cause scotte basia. I gratas kate gatos kate. I cause delay. Delay in achievement. Delay in ministry. I rebuke you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Who is Okechuku? Okechuku, I'm hearing the name like Okechuku. We don't have the time. Okechuku, you are wearing, there are two of you. You are one. The other person is wearing yellow. Okechuku, this is what I'm seeing in a vision. There is an Okechuku wearing a yellow dress. Is there someone like that? Oh dear. What's your name? Come, stand. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is going to come on one of you right now. A strong anointing. Destroying every yoke that is not of God. Let it fall upon you now. In the name of Jesus. This door that I see closed for Okechuku. I declare it open right now. Open right now. Help them open right now. Hallelujah. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I'm hearing a name, Elizabeth. There's someone with that name. We have to hurry up. We shouldn't stay. Ah, mommy. Elizabeth. A new chapter is opening for Elizabeth. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Elizabeth there is a woman here you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb five years five years one two three four five please who is that oh dear I wish we had time but we have to hurry up five years who is that person please very quickly let me know when that person is here because the season of that person has come in the name of Jesus Christ Elizabeth by the power that raised Christ from the dead I decree and declare right now that everything that is stopping the opening of a new season this lady going back this tap that lady for me lift your hands where you are I'm seeing oil coming on your head I don't know you but in the name of Jesus even though I'm praying for these people the Lord is saying I should announce to you that a new season is opening for your life and your destiny a new season is opening for your life and destiny. 
in the name of Jesus Christ father I declare my God I just saw like fire moving from my left to my right over Elizabeth fire may that grace come upon you now in the name of Jesus let it bring to end every season and open you up to a new one I declare this by the Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I prayed a prayer in the morning and I'm seeing that thing happen again the Lord is ministering to me that there are a number of ministers here you have struggled at a particular level of grace but God wants to multiply his hand upon your life I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands I'm seeing the number eight fire is coming on eight people among the ministers here father at the count of three may that grace rest on them one my God two three take that fire take that fire help this woman please take that fire please help that woman in the name of Jesus take that fire new level in your ministry new level some of you I'm seeing you climb ladders you are climbing ladders in the spirit is a symbol of a new season step into that new season of glory in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for the sick now please lay your hands five years the Holy Spirit is still speaking to me trusting God for the fruit of the womb who is that is there someone like that all of you all of you I want to pray for you please just lay your hand on your stomach as a point a prophetic point of contact just let them be that's all right my friend shout Jesus as loud as you can help him take that grace you will never be the same again in the name of Jesus Christ right now in the name of Jesus please believe that there is a grace that can open the, the door of a womb it doesn't matter the medical report just release your faith in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God every power that is why am I seeing fire just rising from the altar here in the name of Jesus everything that has stopped fruitfulness help that lady in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ and anything that wants to destroy your child fruitfulness fire from heaven is coming upon you right now I open this womb now in Jesus name according to the time of life I declare return with your miracle children now return with your miracle children return with your miracle children in the name of Jesus madam I'm seeing something that looks like fire on your stomach I don't know why fire is burning on your stomach but in the name of Jesus Christ whether it's for yourself or someone you're standing for let there be a miracle right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please lay your hands let's pray for the sick we have to wrap up father I pray right now for everyone who is trusting God for a miracle in their health just help the lady that shouts now under the anointing don't bring her out but just help her so she does not injure herself I just saw a vision and I had that sound we are praying for the sick now in the name that is above all names agree with me as I pray in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Wow I've not even begun the prayer I'm seeing the Lord taking away lump in the breast breast lump it's going now by the power of the Holy Spirit 
now i rebuke every devil that is back of any infirmity in the name of jesus be delivered right now i command that spirit let god's people go now in jesus name i bring you life and i bring you healing be healed right now in jesus name be healed right now in jesus name blind eyes be opened now in the name of jesus deaf ears be opened now in the name of jesus all bone conditions be healed now in the name of jesus blood conditions be healed now in the name of jesus heart palpitations system and organ failure be restored now in the name of jesus every uri urinary problem i'm seeing the lord heal a urinary problem in the name of jesus be healed right now someone you have difficulty breathing this has been even before covid so this is not about covid you have difficulty breathing sometimes you feel as if you are choking the power of god is touching you right now in the name of jesus christ any genotype here that needs to change we change you by the power of the holy spirit every damaged organ liver kidney heart be restored now every infection in your body i declare healing for you right now If there is anyone here appointed unto death that the devil has planned that you will not see the end of this year in the name of Jesus I command death to leave your habitation now I command death to leave your habitation now I'm holding my stomach because there is someone here having severe pain rambling around your stomach month in month out this continues to happen the power of god is touching you right now the power of jesus is touching you right now in the name of jesus christ any medical report here that is a death sentence cancer hiv hepatitis of all sorts in the name of jesus be healed right now Please believe it. Be healed right now. There's someone you have severe swelling. Severe swelling around your feet. In the name of Jesus, I command that swelling to go down now. Now every other case, whether I mentioned it or not, in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, be healed right now. Be restored right now in the name of Jesus Christ we pray for every church on this ground and within this region regardless the denomination may fire burn upon every altar and I stand here in partnership with our fathers if there is any altar that has been erected in this region and it is not in the name of the Christ all earth we speak to you fight every altar that is not of God we speak by the apostolic and the prophetic every shrine every incantation everything that is not consistent with the character of Christ I command every altar may the earth fight and nullify them in the name of Jesus Christ And we declare that by this time next year let it be that enugu state and even the east of the niger 
let it be for you from glory to glory revival to revival power to power prosperity to prosperity increase to increase in the name of jesus christ we seal this prophetic prayer tonight in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy ghost god bless you sirs let's honor our father now hear me hold on please hold on before we wrap up this conference my session here we are going to shout seven hallelujah listen hallelujah means halal yeshua it means praise the lord are we together now it's not a blind shout this is the final shout that will bring every wall of jericho down and then bring unity and bring strength that everything we have discussed here i'm going to be doing the counting and you will be shouting are you ready seven hallelujah but let me say this in advance thank you southeast i love you from the depth of my heart from the very depth of my heart bishop reverend daniel and every one servant of god who has helped to make our stay and every time we come comfortable i truly love and honor you sincerely and it is my prayer that together as co-laborers we will continue to present everyone complete in christ in the name of jesus are you ready to shout hallelujah eh? hallelujah oh hallelujah eh? it's the shout of victory hallelujah eh? When I count the number, you give a loud shout. That that shout is Tehila. It's a shout oh, that no. is bringing every mountain. Are you ready? Seven hallelujah. Number one. Hallelujah. Number two. Number three! Hallelujah! Hey. Number four! Hallelujah! Number five! Hallelujah! Number six! Hallelujah! Hear me! This final shout! Anything that could not stop you from shouting six times, it will never have the power to stop you the seventh time. Are you ready, Southeast? Number seven. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, 
and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you